Hello, I'm James Whistler, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use tracing and event logging in your Ironspeed applications to improve performance and locate problems. Tracing and event logging are very useful ways to get some kind of visibility of what's going on behind the scenes when your generated application is running. Whilst you can obviously use the debugging facility within Visual Studio to interrogate your application at runtime, using tracing or event logging can give you easy access to elements of data behind the scenes that are not as easy to get hold of or visualize within the Visual Studio debug application. So let's run our application that we're looking at here, which is uh, an example of the Southwind database. Let's run our application within Internet Explorer and have a look at what we can see there in normal run mode. So I'm going to switch to design mode within Ironspeed Designer and click run to generate and build my application and run it within my browser. Here it comes, it's just compiling now. And here is my application. Now as you can see within the app as I'm running at the moment, I've obviously got a show table page on the categories. If I scroll down there, clearly you can see that I've got my footer control and no further content on the page. By using tracing, I'm going to be able to write an awful lot of the content of what's happening in the session that I'm running into the bottom of the browser page such that I can interrogate it at runtime simply by scrolling down in my browser window. So let's switch back into Designer and I'll get rid of this uh, pop-up for you there about generating my application and we're going to now introduce our changes under the build menu we have the tracing and event logging option down here in the menu and if I click that I'll get a pop-up up which gives me two different options the first of which is to implement and set application level tracing um, and as you can see it's giving us a, a description there about the fact that it's going to be writing a lot of the content of that trace into the bottom of our page. Now obviously I haven't ticked the box yet but you can probably see there's uh, two different options that are greyed out currently. If I tick the box we can now set whether we want that trace information to be displayed to local users only or local and remote users. Uh, the differential there is that in this particular instance I'm running the application on my development machine as a result we're not putting this, the application live on the web every single user, i.e. me, who's running it in development, is going to be a local user. However, it may well be that you want to implement the application onto a development or production server, rather, such that people can access it through the web. In that instance, it may well be that you only want the local user, so somebody who's actually logged onto that server, who's accessing it through the web, to be able to see the event log, or, or rather the application trace, um, or it could be that you want even remote users to be able to view that information as well. So that's what that option is for. It, it's really only relevant if you're running the application on an internet connected server. So I'm going to say that I only want it to be for local users only. I'm going to click OK. So having now switched that on, if I click run again and generate my application again, we should be able to see then the full trace coming out in the bottom of our run of our runtime application. If this runs quickly enough, I'll show you it as it pops up onto my screen. And there we are, there's our app. And you may be able to see from the scroll bar on the right hand side that we've got an awful lot more information down there somewhere about what's happening within our application. So let's think about scrolling down and having a look at some of that detail and what it tells us. So scrolling down, there are a number of different sections here. I'm going to work my way through them slowly. So this is the beginning of our trace. At the top here we've got the request details. Um, the, one of the most important areas here is the session ID. That is always unique for every connected user to your application and you'll see that that particular string it's obviously a slightly messy long uh, alphanumeric string it is entirely unique and you may well see it referred to on a number of occasions as we work our way through the trace so the first thing you can see within the trace information itself are all of the different processes that have fired in the construction and rendering of the page that we're looking at so we have a number of the, the pre-init in it um, and the preload and load events and of course once we get to load 
we're now starting to see here in this section the fact that we're interacting with our database so if I scroll down here and show you a little bit more of that you can see every single SQL command that designer has run against the database in order to construct that page so the first of all we run a simple uh, select count query against the database to work out how many rows we're going to be displaying on that page we can see the time that the execution of that statement was run we can work out how long it's taken so if you had a situation where you were looking we've got here an executed at statement there and a duration um, in milliseconds for each command um, if you had a scenario where you were running an application and the page was taking a long time to come up um, it could conceivably be that you've got inefficient SQL or SQL you can obviously look through the trace to determine how long each of the various SQL commands that are running behind your page are taking to execute so that could be a useful aspect of, of running the trace and having a look at the data in this particular instance when we've we've run this page um, we don't really have much of a where clause specified because it's simply a show table and we hadn't operated any filters on the screen but if I scroll down you will eventually see here a large SQL statement that's being run to actually lift the data off there for me um, you can get into situations or it can be very useful to look at the trace um, if you're using views or you're using some kind of filtering and you're not getting the results that you would expect to see within your screen it can sometimes be useful to actually grill down here and you can genuinely see the actual SQL statement that's running against your database um, you can clearly copy and paste it into SQL Server Management Studio and run it um, interrogate it make sure that you understand what's happening um, but it's probably the most reliable way to find out exactly what's happening um, if you are not getting the data that you're expecting to see um, displayed on the screen in addition to that of course we're going to see the SQL statement that's being used within this trace to populate every one of the drop downs on that screen so whether they're drop down controls in an edit record for example or whether we've got filters on our show table page in this case all of the SQL used to populate them will be being displayed to us we can find the where clauses that are being used um, in populating them throughout the trace so it can sometimes be quite surprising to see the amount of SQL that's actually being run even in a very simple show table page um, of course you might not be thinking about things like foreign key displays but every single one of those that's listed and built within your screen will be being run and again you can obviously look at the SQL statement and validate it make sure that it's giving you the results that you would expect so that's the end of that section of the trace and you can see obviously that the last statement in there is the end render so that's the end of the rendering process at which point the control will be returned to the user in the browser so scrolling down further within our trace the next section is the control tree so you can see every single control within the hierarchy of the page that's listed within and, and con contained on your ASPX page at this point so at the very top level we have the ASPX definition of the page and within there we've then got every single control with its children throughout the page structure I won't run you through the whole thing uh, but I'm going to show you just simply here you've got the page header you may well be familiar we've got the language selector etc sign in print button the various subsections or sub children control within the page header we've got no vertical menu because we're running straight through to the page content so within there we've got the various search buttons and filter controls etc control buttons for data exporting new records etc and then the repeater section and in here we're going to have one uh, repeater row for every row shown within our show table page so I scroll through all of those and you can see now we've got to the footer control with our copyright control in there and that's the full definition of the SPX page its full control structure moving on the next section is the session state now this is actually very useful more useful certainly than the control structure 
If you're using session variables within your application, it can be tricky, even within Visual Studio uh, debugging environment, to get visibility of what values those session variables have. So if you're using session variables within your application and tracking your process, progress through pages, one of the easiest ways to interrogate those values at runtime is simply to switch the tracing on and scroll down and look at the session state to have a quick look at what those variable values are and how they're changing as you navigate through the application. So certainly the session state section of the trace is probably one of the most, other than the database area, is probably one of the most important areas to you uh, in interrogating your application at runtime, trying to evaluate what's happening um, and determining what variable values are. You can of course do that within Visual Studio by instantiating each one of those session variables and then sticking a watch on them to look at their value. Um, but this is a lot, a, a dramatically quicker and easier way of doing it. Um, and it obviously means that you don't need to be running it through Visual Studio. You can interrogate it directly. So you could be using it in production if that were the case and you required that kind of debugging ability. Scrolling down further, we've got the application state, which is empty in this case. We've got details of any cookies which may be recorded against the application. You can clearly see here um, that we've got cookies requested and built for other applications other than the one that we're now currently using. Um, so don't be confused by that. Uh, cookies which are set for other applications may well be being displayed within that collection even though they're not intrinsically related to the particular application that you're running. We've obviously in our response cookies collection we're not running cookies in this app as it's only a little demo as a result that the collection is empty and then we've got a number of different sections the headers collection and the response to those headers um, and then working our way right down through we've got the session variables of this particular session and this application. So that's tracing. Um, clearly I could click you through and show you lots of different pages and what their various traces look like um, but I hope you've got a little bit of an understanding of exactly what kind of detail is included in a trace and how it might be useful to you in determining whether your application is running uh, A, logically as you'd expect it to, are you getting the data that you'd expect, but possibly to interrogate the performance and look for where the delays are. Um, if your pages are running slowly, you're trying to interrogate and understand exactly which queries it might be that, are, that have the performance problem. Um, by looking in that database section at the top there and the, uh, the run times of each of the queries, um, you should be able to locate the problem. For those of you who are interested, I'll just switch back into Designer to show you what that option that we set under our build menu, if you remember it was uh, under build and tracing and event logging, you can see that we've got this ticked and we're, so we're running application level tracing for local users only. All that's doing is actually amending our web config file for us. So if we click over into the web config, if I scroll down slightly, you'll see these three keys, trace database, database commands, trace data access methods, and trace transaction cache, all of which are now set to true. In the vast majority of cases you're running your application, either in development or production, you would have set those three values to false. Um, so we wouldn't be running tracing. Um, so switching that option in the build menu to true for tracing will set those three key values to true for us within the web config. Additionally, if we scroll further down, you'll see another line within here. If I can find it for you here, this line. And this has also been set to true. So we've got trace enabled true. So we know that we are, we've switched on tracing. We've got a request limit of 999. Um, so that means that 999 interactions with the, the session will be being traced. Um, Effectively, all that means is that tracing is not going to get switched off, if you like, um, as we're using tracing to determine what's happening in our application. And critically, we've set page output to true. So all we're indicating there is we want the output of that trace um, written to the bottom of every page in our browser such that we can scroll down and see it. So if I just uh, I'll flick back to the show categories table page, go back into my build menu, and I'm going to click that and turn it off. If I do that, and I do a quick build, we should be able to see when we go into our web config file that those tracing values that we were just looking at have been reset.
So back up to the top, we scroll down here, you can see that these have been turned off, the transaction cache is still actually being traced, but critically down here, you'll see trace has now been switched to false, so it's no longer enabled. The request limit's been put down to 10, and the page output has similarly been switched to false, so we're no longer writing that output to the bottom of the page. So coming back into Designer um, to our page again, we go back to the Build menu. We also have Event Logging available to us. So if I switch off my tracing and switch on Event Logging. Um, within Event Logging, we really don't have quite the full level of detail available to us in the log that we're going to have available to us via tracing. However, it can be very useful, in, even in a production environment, to be able to write database commands and or exceptions to the event viewer, um, such that we can have a look at the log and understand what's actually happening to our application at runtime. So if I switch OK on there, and I do a rebuild all, again, this feature within Designer is really designed to make maintaining and amending your web config file as foolproof and as simple as it could possibly be. So having done that and generated our app, if we run it, we can now be confident that any of those changes that we've made, um, any exceptions within the database are going to be written straight to the event log for us. We'll wait for that to come up. So there we are running our application. Of course you'll see now if I scroll down, we've turned off tracing so we don't have that content at the bottom of the page. But if critically if I go into my start bar and under settings control panel, I'm running on Windows XP here, um, it may be a slightly different location within Windows 7 or a similar operating system. Under administrative tools, you'll see that we have the event viewer. And I've brought that up here on this machine. And by refreshing it, you can see as our application is running, we double click into our entries, we can see all of the events being fired against the database by our application being recorded in the log, um, in the application log here, rather than security or system, for example. In addition to that, that would then mean that going back into our application, if we want to amend the code and write our own custom entries into the log, um, we can very simply do that. Just by adding that code in, um, we've got the system.diagnostics namespace in, in imported into our code, and we can simply use the event log, um, I think it's the event log write line entry, um, to write code directly to that log um, for custom entries. Let me take you into the web config and we can just have a quick look at the changes um, that's, that have been implemented by clicking that. And you can see here now we've got some entries, key entries within our web config. Log events has now been set to true, so we are logging events. Log database commands is true, that means all da interactions with the database are going to be logged and recorded in the log. In addition, we're also recording all database exceptions and commit exceptions, and all of those additionally are going to be having, will be written into that event log um, for our interrogation via the event viewer. So that's really all I have to say about um, tracing and event logging. Um, tracing in particular is an extremely useful way to get understanding in, of what's happening behind the scenes when your pages are running. Um, either from a logic point of view if you're getting incorrect data or data that you're not expecting to see returned, um, if you want to look at session variable values or if you're interrogating the performance of your application trying to understand where the bottlenecks might be, um, it's a great way to get some detail about that um, and get some visibility of what's going on behind the scenes. I hope that's been useful. As always there's more help available to you via the forums or the knowledge base online um, but I hope this video has been useful and taught you a little bit about the basics of tracing and event logging. Thanks for watching.